Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks uh, for uh, joining us again uh, today. Uh, we want to get you updated uh, and uh, get through uh, some uh, information rather uh, quickly. Um, uh, first, uh, let's uh, uh, talk about uh, the county's data. We'll go right to the dashboard. Again, you can find this information at duchessny.gov. Uh, in the week that uh, uh, since we've uh, been live uh, on, a, on a town hall presentation, um, Dutchess County has now uh, countywide conducted over 100,000, uh, nearly 104,000 uh, tests conducted and completed uh, across the county. We have very extensive testing infrastructure. Access to testing is a lot easier than it was certainly months ago. Uh, and with that 104,000 tests, uh, we have uh, obviously identified 4,600 uh, positive cases. Uh, we are now, uh, however, uh, monitoring 235 uh, total uh, cases, uh, active cases currently with only, uh, and certainly it's important to them, but two individuals are hospitalized and we've been steady at 153 individuals having succumbed to the disease for uh, several weeks. Uh, as uh, you know, uh, we, all across America we've been tracking uh, the uh, uh, in essence, positivity rate, the infection rate, uh, and uh, New York uh, State has that information available to you on, on, the, on their dashboard, but uh, the Mid-Hudson region remains at 1% positivity, 1% uh, transmission rate, which uh, has been very consistent, uh, in fact, uh, uh, a little bit uh, above or below uh, each, uh, each day over these last several weeks. So we, we've basically averaged at about 1% transmission, which is is good, especially in the context of one, controlling the transmission of the disease, and two, uh, as we uh, prepare for school reopening in whatever uh, fashion schools reopen in, in your particular district, remember the state has set this window. You need to be below 5% in positivity uh, in order to open, and then you need to remain below 9% uh, in positivity uh, to, uh, to remain open. Now, um, we're joined uh, this afternoon uh, by one of Dutchess County's uh, behavioral and community health team, the coordinator for communicable disease, uh, Andrew Evans. Andy Evans uh, has uh, worked with this county for quite some time, as understands uh, infectious disease and, and uh, the way in which we respond to them. Um, um, uh, and uh, I, I would note that uh, Andrew is part of and really uh, helping to shepherd uh, our rapid response team, meaning a positive case becomes uh, uh, known to us and we have to respond very, very quickly. Uh, Andy, as we have you, and I'll, I'll jump back and forth between me and you uh, over the course of the next uh, you know, half hour or so, um, but we've said with school reopening that 5% positivity is actually pretty high to begin with, and 9% positive positivity is, this is the window the state's established, but 9% positivity is, is pretty frightening. Do you want to you want to offer uh, or talk to that to some degree? Did I just lose him? I just lost Andrew. Okay, we'll get you in a minute, Andy. <laughs> I don't know what happened, uh, but uh, we'll find you. Uh, we're having some technical difficulties. I've been having them all day today. Um, so uh, we'll get to Andy in a minute. Uh, if you're here looking for guidance on phase four businesses that are still not open, uh, there still is no new guidance. Uh, we every day have been having these conversations uh, with the staff from the governor's office. Uh, there is no update on gyms. There is no update on theaters. There's no update on bowling alleys and no update on indoor uh, wedding venues as of yet. Uh, I will say this. Uh, we believe uh, that it is absolutely uh, appropriate uh, to set the guidance and give some expectation to these businesses. Uh, just as you and I uh, have been sitting at home waiting for the governor and, and our districts to kind of make decisions on reopening, imagine the pins and needles that we've had to, you know, to bear, right? We're, we're uncertain as to what those steps are. We might be a little bit frustrated and anxious about it. Now imagine for a moment uh, businesses and their employees uh, who were told they were going to be open during phase four, which we are now uh, a month into, uh, and still have gotten no direction on what they should expect next. Uh, and that is uh, really, we're really moving towards crisis in, in, this, in, this, uh, in this situation because these are businesses that frankly may never open again if they aren't given some expectation on, on what they need to do. Now we also monitor um, obviously uh, the data from other states and other states in the region have allowed some of these businesses to reopen under certain uh, conditions and we agree with that. Uh, and, and we'll just note that in the immediate region, immediate northeast region, we're just not seeing a spike uh, in transmission. Obviously, we want to be serious about this, and we have been, uh, 
Uh, but uh, again, we think that there are safe ways to reactivate these businesses, get them open again, uh, and we do think it's important. Uh, didn't get Andy back. We've lost him indefinitely. Uh, so we'll get to Andy when you tell me I can. I, can I? Okay. Andy, do you want to talk a little bit? About, I apologize. We've been having technical problems uh, uh, all day today. This, um, this concept first, um, uh, and it's up to you if you want to dive too deep into this, but, um, you know, we're not really... You lost him again? Okay. Um, so I'm just going to... Uh, I'll continue on with our other... <laughs> I apologize. I'm having, having a technical difficulty. If you have a question, write it in the comment uh, uh, section below the uh, live feed. Um, um, you want to try, Andrew? Let's give him one more try. Andy, you're with us. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, still having some technical problems. So uh, I'll let you guys work it out, uh, and you let me know. Um, so uh, uh, want to give an update on uh, our storm response. So we've all lived uh, through this these last uh, seven days, as if uh, we haven't had enough challenges. Uh, just as a, as a reference, uh, uh, of course, uh, in response to this tropical storm, uh, 72,000, uh, over 72,000 power outages countywide. That's 58,000 outages in the Central Hudson District and 13,000 uh, in the NYSEG uh, District. Um, so uh, there, there are still a handful, obviously, that, that are experiencing power outages. And, and as, by the way, um, infrastructure repairs are made. You might be turned on. You might come off for a period of time. But, but basically speaking, in NYSAG and Central Hudson, they've met the 100% restoration. But again, we know that there are still folks that, that do have some outages, and we recognize that. Uh, we also recognize that there was a great deal of frustration uh, in response to this storm. Admittedly, uh, it hit harder uh, than I think uh, we, we all could have guessed it would. I think the predictions suggested it, it could hit hard, uh, but I think we're used to not seeing those meet those projection expectations. This storm did. Uh, it did sort of re-energize as it came into uh, Connecticut, New Jersey, and, and this region. Uh, and we saw this burst of energy, which ultimately uh, did cause significant uh, damage, as you know. Um, we've had regular conversations. Uh, as you, our response mechanism is this. When we have an emergency of any sort, uh, we convene supervisors, mayors, road crews, and the public utilities to, to talk through both preparation and response, to address unmet needs, to react to any, any ongoing problems. We had those same calls with the storm, had regular communication, faced some of the same, um, uh, uh, presented some of the same uh, complaints and concerns that many of you had. Um, uh, I will tell you uh, up front, uh, woefully, woefully disappointed in Optimum. Uh, their response uh, was, uh, was, was meager at best uh, and communication was non-existent. And so if you've communicated with uh, supervisors or mayors and they don't have more information regarding Optimum, uh, I wouldn't put that burden uh, on them uh, until yesterday uh, when uh, we were able to, th thanks to Senator Serino, uh, in the governor's office, we were able to convene a call with Optimum uh, and supervisors and mayors, and uh, with that, uh, we were able to uh, express our concerns uh, very uh, candidly uh, and explain that this is just not the way to respond to an emergency, that, that cable service in particular uh, in 2020, but certainly uh, under the current circumstances in, in, in dealing with the pandemic, uh, internet service, cable service, just critically important, not only to average citizens uh, in, in underserved areas, uh, but also to businesses. And um, I, I don't often uh, 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 criticize, and, and I'll be careful uh, in, in how I say it. I'll let other elected officials rant as they wish. But, but in this case, it was just a, a, a woeful uh, response and uh, very disappointed. So uh, with that said, uh, we did get Optimum to agree and to make a commitment that we're going to hold them to. Uh, this county does something that, that, that not every county does in response to these. Again, we convene uh, these calls with uh, all the local leadership and the utilities. Optum has never participated in those calls. They committed yesterday to finally uh, establish staff. We're grateful for that. They're going to commit to those regular updates so that we have this communication. We will work with them and you to make sure that you have a better line of communication and more local representation. But there really needs to be a customer-first attitude, and uh, that was non-existent uh, these last seven days. And frankly, uh, we are hopeful. Uh, that we can build the relationship with Optimum to be a better, uh, better contact and, uh, uh, and conduit for you. Uh, but also, I think uh, the Public Service Commission definitely needs to in uh, in involve itself 
uh, and make sure that there are certain standards. When it comes to public utilities, listen, you may not have been satisfied with the response, but I can tell you every, every time there was a concern, we were able to get Central Hot Center NYSEG on the call to react, uh, to give us some basic information, and to attempt to coordinate response uh, with local officials and uh, municipal leaders M did not happen with Optimum. And I am grateful that as a result of yesterday's call, um, as a result of yesterday's call, uh, we um, uh, were able to um, uh, get them to commit to uh, to uh, prioritize uh, that partnership and response. Andy, we have you on speakerphone. Are you there? I am here. Okay, Can we're going to let's let's do it this way. Uh, we had a technical problem. Andy, you've been with us uh, county government for a while. You, you're very familiar, obviously, with our response to communicable disease. Um, first, let's let's talk a little bit about uh, you know if we got to nine percent positivity or transmission, that doesn't sound too good, does it? It does not sound good at all. Right, like right now for rapid response, we do maybe you know four to five cases of that a, a week. If it was like nine. 9% or greater, we'd be uh, like 10 times that amount and we wouldn't be able to keep pace with it. So. Right. It does, you know, it does call into, I mean, I don't want to question it, but it is a, it is a broad window. So, so if we creep up even to the 5%, uh, that is, that is, that is somewhat alarming and, 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 and we would obviously have concerns about that. I, I, I know we would. Yes, for sure. It, it would definitely, we would be looking to see what kind of dynamic would be causing that increase and hopefully we can intervene to get it back down to the one percent level okay if you're watching now and you're having any difficulty hearing andy just mention it in the comment feed i'm sure you will not that i'd have to tell you to do that uh we'll try to try to address it uh andy so what is the rapid response team uh, that you are helping to coordinate <laughs> what the rapid response team is an extension of the contact tracing what it is is that we re receive reports of positive cases of disease and it's usually um not just somebody in their home, but somebody that maybe works at a business or a facility. And what we do is we get notified and we interview that index person and we try to uh, contain that infection um, at that facility to make sure that the facility is doing all the mitigations that they are supposed to be doing when they're open. And we interview that index to find out if he's exposed any of his coworkers or any of the customers or uh, or clients that might be in the facility, and then we work towards isolating and quarantining those people that need to be quarantined, and also educate the business if there's any deficiencies in their mitigations that need to be done. And we do this, as soon as we get the report, we are on it immediately, because we want to get ahead of this disease, and we want to, this is one of the ways to maintain that 1%, is that we, if we can, you know, get around this and isolate it, it won't spread, spread further. Uh, thank you for that. And so, um, as it relates in particular um, to to schools, but we, we talked a little bit about this before. Um, so our rapid response team is is established so that we can respond quickly. In some cases, more quickly than perhaps uh, uh, the the state database would would have us be alerted. Is that is that fair to say? That is definitely fair to say. Um, reports come in. The state system is based as lab based and as we're aware, unfortunately, there are some delays in getting lab reports, but many times we will get the report from the facility or uh, we, we'll find out that they're a contact or symptomatic we just, uh, or through the, uh, the, um, the hotline as well. So we get reports from various entities and then we validate, first we validate whether the report is real and then if it is real, then we, we uh, send out the team. I have about five or six staff that work on that. So uh, let's update uh, folks on schools. As we know, uh, the uh, Department of Behavioral and Community Health had been working uh, with school districts. Uh, in fact, I think pretty extensively providing uh, both some basic guidance, uh, but also answering questions and developing uh, their plans. As, as you know, as, uh, as viewers today, uh, you know that school districts were required a week ago to submit uh, their reopening plans. Remember, those those are within their purview. Dutchess County doesn't direct them. Uh, this is within the state's parameters. So each district submitted a plan. Uh, it's important to note uh, that um, uh, there were 107 districts that either didn't submit their plan to the right state portal, and I, you know, if if anything can be made confusing, uh, Albany can 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 do that. Um, but uh, that said, uh, uh, Beacon and Poughkeepsie school districts were provided the opportunities, I understand it, um, as, 
as they all were, they were given an extension of another week to finalize those plans. Beacon and Poughkeepsie were among the, uh, among the districts that still needed time to finalize those plans, so those are underway. We've been working with those districts to provide some guidance. Uh, and uh, so, so we'll know more. But you should know uh, what if your school uh, submitted a plan, uh, then uh, you should uh, be able to view that online. School districts are required by the state now to have, I think, uh, one, uh, one or excuse me, two public sessions uh, to allow uh, residents to express their concerns or interests. Uh, and that's uh, that's any any resident of the school district and a session with with their staff and school teach and their teachers to go through what their plan is. Andy, coming back to you, um, uh, and we again as it relates to this rapid response. One of the you know it's interesting. Uh, I was on the phone with a with a teacher earlier this week, and she said, you know, uh, all of my colleagues were talking about desks and and how close in proximity and which days the kids will go to school. But she said the only thing I cared about is what is. How do we react to a positive case? What is the rapid response to to contact tracing? And I said, you know, the irony is that is really the issue, right? If if we know that a that a child or or, or a, a staff person uh, enters the building uh, who's symptomatic or uh, or ultimately does test positive, how do we react? Do you want to talk a little bit about the county's expectation on rapid response? And uh, and and we do recognize that contact tracing um, will be it uh, will be made easier. Uh, by uh, cooperating with school districts, but it does uh, really uh, rely and require us, the county's uh, staff and, and, and some volunteers, uh, to engage in contact tracing. You want to talk about what that looks like? Yes, yes. Uh, well, as part of the plan, as you, if, if you may or may not know... I do know because I read looking, it. <laughs> they're looking... At, yes, they are looking uh, for uh, to have the person's uh, some kind of screening modality by the parents at home. But if for some reason a case were to get through, then yes, the school would immediately notify us, and then we would start the contact tracing and make uh, and do. We would investigate the incident, so to speak, and then we would make our judgment as to who needs to be isolated in quarantine, and give the school the guidance on how to, to clean what needs to be clean. It, it and it goes beyond just the classroom. We'd be looking at the busing and the whole the whole uh, you know from home to school and back of uh, what that child or who, what or who that child may have exposed. So yes, it, and it would be done as soon as we get the report, we would start working on it. And we are uh, 20, we're open 24 seven. So we get that call after hours, we also do it then as well. So and uh, again, if, if it's a child, again, we won't interview the child per se, we would do a proxy interview with the parent We'd also talk to the school about where the child's whereabouts has been as well. And again, put all the pieces together, again, like that business, to contain this so that it doesn't spread any further. Thanks for that. Um, so Janice asks specifically, well, how does contact tracing work when some people have to wait two weeks for results? Uh, that is problematic. We are, however, seeing um, uh, uh, test results on average. Uh, as I understood it, um, uh, the average is something in the neighborhood of two to four days. Does that does that sound right, or is it a little bit better than that? The average. I think that you are correct. It is about, I believe, two to four days. So yeah. So um, uh, if uh, uh, if somebody uh, when somebody is alerted they tested positive, is that already in the state database or no? Yes. Once they're alerted, the lab is also required by law to report it. And once they report it, they electronically report it. It makes automatically goes into the state database. And then um, I'm one of the guy. I'm in charge of that aspect of things. Well, I assign the cases to our team of uh, contact tracers uh, every morning, even on weekends. So. So to Janice's question, uh, yes, uh, contact tracing is made more difficult uh, if we have to wait for results. Uh, we are getting results in, as I said, I think the average is between two to four days, which does mean, by the way, that there are some that are seven to ten days, and, and there are some that are within minutes, and there are certain areas uh, where we are getting those tests. We don't, we're not responsible for the labs. These are independent. Of course, there's about a dozen that, that get results from the Mid-Hudson region. I think labs from New Jersey to upstate New York get our, get our cases. So um, it is important, and we've explained this to the state, in particular with school reopening, that there is pressure on the labs to be as responsive uh, and, and, and to be as uh, prepared for this as possible. You get a huge influx of, uh, of students returning uh, in, in, in some capacity, and, and they want to, we want to be responsive uh, as best we can. But yeah, it is delayed if, if, we don't, if you don't get those lab results in. However, um, you know, uh, by the, whenever they come in and whenever we know, 
being able to do the contact tracing is critical because, again, whether it was two minutes or two weeks, you still will want to know who came into contact, who you might have come into contact with, because they too could very well uh, be um, uh, 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 carrying the disease and, and, and susceptible to, to transmitting. So uh, we react as quick as we can, and it is based on results. So that's a good question, uh, and the reality is it is somewhat uh, challenged. Uh, Christian asked, uh, why do so many stores allow their employees to work without masks? It really depends. Uh, not every business is required to have every employee masked at all times. The basic expectation uh, for most businesses uh, it, under the state guidance is when you're in proximity to, uh, to a customer within six feet, uh, uh, you should be you should be wear a face covering, uh, and uh, that's the expectation. Some businesses um, are uh, certainly um, uh, you know a bit more strict about that, and some uh, I think uh, you know if you're aware of those that might have particular uh, uh, problems, then we're always happy to reach out. We've been basically expressing uh, to those businesses what the rules are. We get we've gotten general compliance, meaning most are willing to accommodate. Uh, there are certain situations where, frankly. Uh, the permitting entity, like delis, are permitted in some cases by the New York State um, uh, uh, Department of Ag Agriculture and Markets. Uh, they have to impose those those guidance, those rules, and, and we at the very least explain that uh, really follow the guidance uh, so that you don't jeopardize your permitting uh, and you don't get other people sick. So it's really about being considerate, and I think overall uh, we've gotten general compliance. Uh, it, it certainly shows in our numbers uh, if you're looking at cases uh, and severity of cases and transmission. Uh, we've definitely been holding the line, and, and that, that curve has been flattened. Uh, Laney asks a very valuable question. How do two working parents do online learning through uh, November? The short answer is it is going to be an increasingly difficult challenge, which, by the way, and I'll say this to his credit, it's what the governor spoke about. It's one of the challenges we have with reopening. Uh, whether it's reopen full-time, reopen part-time, or online, it is a challenge for uh, for working families. Uh, believe me, we you know we recognize this. My mother uh, did uh, daycare for years, and and as a as a babysitter basically uh, for a lot of working families. And the challenge is great. There's not adequate um, uh, access to childcare. We know that. Of course, it's a huge cost uh, if you're not able to afford it. Uh, so the expectation is that that employers do give a degree of latitude, but it's not clearly expressed in the state's expectation or the state guide. So. Uh, it is going to be a challenge, and uh, we're going to continue to work uh, with residents to express those concerns, work with school districts to try to uh, make sure their planning accommodates or considers that, and uh, we, we do recognize it. Believe me, I, I, we, we understand it. There just isn't an easy answer. Um, you know, you've seen in other states where, you know, schools go back sort of full-time, uh, and uh, you have hundreds of cases, and they're closed then for a couple of weeks, and that, you know, just isn't the... That's uh, not, you know, that's not, that's not the best game plan, right? We don't want to be open, closed, open, closed. Um, and I know there are various uh, differences of opinion, uh, but the goal here is to balance the need to get students back into the classroom uh, against, obviously, the public health risk. And that's uh, all we can do is advise, uh, and the state continues to uh, to set those guidances. Uh, Evan is asking where he can get a free COVID uh, test. Andy, do you have uh, any? You're not the testing guy, but uh, I know we have some contact information on uh, some contact. Uh, excuse me. Yes, we do have some information about testing that you can find at DuchessNY.gov. But testing and access to testing, Andy, is is pretty um, pretty broad this, at this point. Yeah, it is pretty broad. I'm not sure where you can get a free test, but uh, I definitely you know uh, check out the. Um, the um, for places listed on our website and just reach out. They might have to be able to offer such a thing, but I'm not sure. Right, and uh, there's certain um, uh, certain facilities that are providing them at no charge. Some provide them at a, at your copay if you have insurance, uh, and uh, and then there are some that are that are, are, are more expensive. But visit DuchessNY.gov. Uh, you can have access uh, to the what testing's available. Uh, but always reach out first. I think to your 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 physician if you have a doctor that you'd like to speak to, then then go there first. Uh, you can also check uh, one of your pharmacies, Rite Aid and CVS, for instance, both are providing testing. And, and I don't recall the cost, uh, but uh, I'm, I, again, some of these are, are a lot more affordable uh, than others. Uh, Heather, can the county do anything to encourage the reopening of schools for in-person learning? I mean, the answer is we are encouraging it. Uh, you know, uh, we, we believe that with the right steps, <clears throat> it can be safe, but it's not up to us. 
Uh, this is governed by the state of New York, the governor's office, the state education department. Uh, we are advising districts on how to reopen safely. Uh, but again, under the state uh, uh, state rules, we don't have any jurisdiction over school districts. They are uh, permitted to make their decision based on their needs uh, and, and, and a plan that's submitted to Albany. Uh, we are working with districts to make it as safe as possible to reopen in person. Um, Andy has uh, spent a lot of time on the phone with school districts. You want to talk a little bit about the interaction you've had with the districts over the last uh, two weeks, Andy? Yes, no, it's been very good. It looks like they asked a lot of good questions, and I, I think they're, um, most of their questions for us have been related to what we're talking about today, co what contact tracing will look like, and they, they did have some questions about testing as well. But, you know, I think most of them feel, you know, that they they can put a plan in place that will that'll meet the, the guidance documents and hopefully be safe for students to come back to school. So we, we began this conversation with the expectation uh, that um, uh, that students would get back to an in-person in education with certain precautions. We continue to advise the districts on how to make that uh, the safest possible. That's really our role, although I, I do think as a county we've, we've sort of uh, done more than, than some others uh, to provide that guidance. We'll continue to do it both for districts uh, and for families. Um, uh, there was... Uh, 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 Colleen had a question for parents concerned with uh, uh, the financial costs associated with child care. Are there options uh, and, and resources available? Uh, the short answer is there are some resources available. Uh, if, uh, if you could, um, we would encourage you to first visit duchessny.gov. You can, I think, even type in child care in, um, uh, in the info bar and, or the search uh, tool, and it'll provide you some guidance. Uh, but if you reach out to our offices here, we can connect you with the Department of Community and Family Services uh, and our uh, connection with uh, the Child Care Council of Duchess and Putnam. There are some opportunities. We are uh, providing some resources uh, that uh, that have been made available uh, through the state and federal government. So uh, depending on income levels, uh, again, these are set by the state and federal government, but we're, we're more than happy to try to connect you. Uh, we recognize the challenge. It is a huge, huge challenge. It's one of the difficulties in having, you know, a partial reopening of schools uh, and, and expecting people to get back to work, but we need both, right? We need we need to be safe. We need students to have that in-person interaction. We need people to be able to get back to work, and we need to be able to manage public health uh, concerns. And that, uh, for us, is a big, uh, uh, big balancing act that we're trying to provide. Uh, some um, some direction and, and guidance on. So reach out to us, please. Uh, how is the county positioned financially? Think we'll get federal funding, asks Matthew. Well, listen, uh, we could not have been more financially strong uh, going into this crisis. Uh, I, in all fairness, uh, we had replenished our fund balance, uh, meaning our rainy day account, uh, it, it, that would provide us some some ability to manage cash flow issues. We had the the highest bond rating of any county in the state, which is really a statement of our sort of our credit credit rating or credit worthiness, if you will. Uh, we had held the line on spending 1.5 percent annual growth each year for the last eight years, and and seven years of uh, property tax cuts, county property tax cuts. This year, actually, providing the largest in 20 years. Those those things set us up. Uh, financially uh, for weathering, but we are not capable of weathering the storm without federal assistance. We're just not. Uh, and I, I, you know, we, we did a press event yesterday uh, with my colleagues uh, in uh, Suffolk and um, uh, Broome counties. Uh, and, um, I, you know, uh, we are making the case that we all have a role to play, that county governments have a responsibility in a public health crisis to respond. That, in fact, is what we do. 1,900 public health departments administered by counties across America were on the front lines. The Andrew Evans of, of county governments all across uh, uh, this, uh, the United States uh, responding and doing the job. That's how we respond to any emergency. If it's a fire, the fire company responds. If it's a fire that exceeds the capacity of that fire company, well, then we bring in mutual aid. And if it exceeds those, then we bring in more. The same is true here. It's a public health crisis. Uh, it was made uh, worse, uh, certainly, uh, by the fiscal and financial crisis that we're challenged with. We're facing uh, a, a great burden here, not only uh, the decline of, of revenue, sales tax, 41% of our budget relies on sales tax, uh, loss of state dollars because the state doesn't have the resources to share, uh, to, to provide uh, the support that we're generally uh, prepared for. Um, we are spending huge sums of money in response uh, to, the, to the crisis of, in all ways. 
Uh, and of course, uh, the shutdown of business and the economic lockdown, if you will, has uh, created a great uh, fiscal stress and economic challenge for families, businesses, uh, and governments. Now, I know some of you sit there and you type on the computer uh, uh, just saying, well, you know, just get over it. You know, open everything up. We'll be okay. Well, we, we missed that boat. Uh, this county has already saw already saw significant sales tax receipts. We're not going to make that up uh, by by simply flinging open the door. It doesn't happen that way. We might we might uh, stave off new losses, but we already are are significantly behind. And we're staring at as much as a fifty to sixty five zero to six zero million dollar deficit operating deficit. That's not enough money to pay for our expenses. We've taken steps to. To reduce uh, spending, we certainly have, but not enough to overcome that. That is a substantial, uh, substantial operating uh, hole that we have to we have to address. Some of you uh, will say, "Well, the federal government shouldn't have to bail you guys out." I don't know who you guys is, although I've read it a few times. These, you know, county governments in particular. You can argue about state and, and, and other levels, but county governments across America are providing the direct services: nine one one, law enforcement, the uh, uh, mental health services. These are the things that you rely on for us. We do it at a a relatively uh, small cost. County taxes are 11 percent of what you pay in property taxes. We don't represent a large chunk of what you spend money on to, to local government, uh, to, to excuse me, to property taxes. Uh, and, and we won't have the resources to provide those services. And what that means is the shrinking uh, of those services and the elimination of jobs. We're just going to have to uh, shrink uh, the workforce, which, which will result in less service and less response, uh, which will have compounding effects. So I understand uh, why people uh, uh, are frustrated by this. Uh, I will tell you it is the federal government's job to step in when an emergency exceeds the capacity of local government to respond. That's the way it works. We respond and when the, when the challenge is too big for us, the state responds. When the challenge is beyond them, the federal government responds. It's how we respond to fires, floods, hurricanes, and public health crises. Uh, in a hurricane, significant damage. We might also close businesses and close activity. In a snowstorm, we stop people sometimes from traveling. That has an economic burden. But if that burden is managed uh, and manageable at the local level, we don't ask for any assistance. This is beyond our capacity. It just is. And uh, I, I do not think that the federal government should be given some pass uh, to hand out dollars uh, to special interests uh, but not to provide the aid necessary to local governments. It's not the way to rebuild America. It's not the way to get back on our feet. And, and to those uh, watching, every county in this country is dealing with the same challenge. It's not unique to just New York or just California, which is easy to say. There are rural, suburban, and urban counties in just about every state in this country that are dealing with this. I know this because I'm on the calls with, with county leaders across America, and they're all facing the same challenge. It, it is easy to blame somebody else, but we have a real crisis right now. The federal government is considering supporting uh, uh, lots of things, right? Uh, and uh, we believe that assistance to local governments is critical. Uh, otherwise, we will be hollowing out services. So I just offer to you that uh, I understand the frustration. I understand why it's easier just to blame somebody else. Uh, but we are not looking for a bailout. I'm not asking anybody to do for Dutchess County what we can't do for ourselves. We are asking the federal government to assist us in making sure that we don't hemorrhage and have to have to have to uh, devastate the delivery of services in order to also respond to this crisis. And that's uh, we're hopeful that uh, we will see that. Uh, Deborah asked information about an outbreak in Brooklyn. She saw on, on uh, t uh, TV this morning. I don't have any new information about that, but uh, we'll try to provide you what we can. Uh, at the moment, again, our transmission rate, positivity rate, holding at one percent. Uh, case, cases are not growing uh, at any any large rate. We've been holding uh, at uh, single digit uh, daily growth, uh, daily new cases. At the same time, seeing uh, obviously the active cases remain sta stable. So uh, that is all positive for us. If there is a concern, we'll know it, we'll hear it, uh, and we'll and we'll react uh, to it and keep you posted about it. Uh, Diane asked about the Millbrook DMV still closed. Uh, Millbrook DMV is still closed. Uh, but uh, 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 the county clerk's office continues to function by appointment in Wappinger and Poughkeepsie. Uh, you can do that by appointment. I know it's frustrating, but you've got to call in, schedule those appointments, uh, and try also uh, to visit uh, the Dutchess County DMV. You can, uh, the clerk's office through the county website, duchessny.gov. You can do some of those uh, transactions online. Corinne asked uh, when the Office for the Aging Senior Friendship Centers will reopen. We don't have a reopen date yet. Obviously, we're concerned. Um, uh, one, we can't really bring people into, you know, certainly seniors into close proximity if there's a health risk. 
uh, and uh, it's just not the right time to begin that process. So we're not yet ready to reopen, uh, but we will keep you posted uh, when we do. Uh, Janet asked about bowling alleys. Again, no direction on bowling alleys, wedding venues, gyms, or theaters. We continue uh, to, uh, uh, to push. Uh, we join uh, our state leaders in trying to get direction uh, on that. We just haven't uh, yet. So uh, let me mention, though, uh, in talking about our senior centers, we've had great response to our senior picnics. Um, uh, so uh, yesterday we were in Pine Plains. Uh, tomorrow we're in the city of Poughkeepsie. We, we generally each year have senior picnics in person. <clears throat> Not able to do that this year, so we're doing them uh, via vehicle, drive through A great response uh, will be, as I said, in Poughkeepsie tomorrow, the city of Poughkeepsie tomorrow. We're in Hyde Park and Fishkill next week. Already we've served over 1,000 seniors uh, lunches uh, that we've purchased from local businesses, uh, which I think is important, showing our support, holding them two times a week through September 3rd. Visit duchessny.gov, type in senior picnics in the search bar, and you'll see our schedule. Uh, somebody I think was online yesterday said, well, I wish I could, I could get to one. Uh, why, don't, why won't you be out in Dover? Well, we are out in Dover. We'll be out in Dover, uh, to, I think, the first week of September. But take a look. Visit, um, uh, visit the website. You'll see with the schedule. Um, uh, there, there is only so much, so many people we can serve, but, but do try to RSVP uh, and uh, take advantage of that opportunity. Uh, great response, great team at Office for the Aging, and we're very grateful uh, to the staff and volunteers that are making those happen. Uh, something we ordinarily do around this time of year, but want you to be aware of it, uh, August 29th, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., our rabies clinic. August 29th um, from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, at the Dutchess County SPCA. That's on Violet Avenue in the town of Hyde Park. Uh, we're doing this in partnership with the Dutchess County SPCA, our Department of Behavioral and Community Health, uh, uh, providing uh, with them free vaccinations for your pets. Now, this note says free vaccinations for county residents, residences, dogs, cats. I don't want people to think that these are you're getting vaccinated for your dogs or cats or domestic ferrets i tell you the things that i have gotten to do, be able to do uh we are we are doing vaccinations for dogs cats and domestic ferrets on august the 29th from 8 a.m to 12 p.m hey listen whatever pet you like um andrew i know you're excited about that aren't you yes i am right. i have a lizard so. you have a lizard we're not vaccinating lizards just domesticated <laughs> ferrets and dogs and cats uh, I have two dogs, uh, no cats, and there will never be a ferret in my house by choice. Uh, if there's one that appears, it will be on its own doing. Uh, but clearly not domesticated. Uh, we need you to register, uh, so visit dcspca.org. So visit dcspca.org to register for that. I uh, also want to announce, uh, very excited, our new parks director working up a storm at Dutchess County Parks, as you know. Marks for Parks. We've got great, <laughs> we've got great county parks. We will be hosting on Friday, August. Talk about pets. Now, are these pets vaccinated? I don't know. Um, so uh, 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 we are sh uh, pre presenting on Friday, August 28th, a nice night out at 7:30 p.m. Uh, um, uh, parking will begin at 6:30. Uh, the Secret Life of Pets 2. Uh, you need to register online. This is a drive-in movie at uh, Wilcox Park in the town of Milan, uh, one of our great parks. It's on Route 199 in the town of Milan. Uh, Secret Life of Pets 2. Please register at duchessny.gov slash parks events or just, I'm sure, type in parks events in the search bar. You'll find your way to it. Please register. Space is limited. Carry in, carry out. Uh, and uh, please, uh, we can't have you bring glass, smoking, or drinking alcohol on the site. Uh, that said, Secret Life of Pets, August 28th, nice night out. If you're interested in joining us, uh, please do. Janice, what's the status of the Stabilization Center? It is open but not walk-in. So we are 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can call, schedule, and receive telehealth, med telehealth services. We are waiting uh, protocols from the state of New York. It is licensed by the state of New York under OASAS uh, and the State uh, Department of Mental Hygiene, Mental Health, uh, Office of Mental Health. Um, and uh, we are not yet prepared to have folks just walk in. We are, however, taking in person uh, if you're if you're uh, if you're brought by an emergency responder, first responder. But uh, call uh, to visit uh, uh, to take advantage of telehealth. Uh, we are open. We are functioning. 
Uh, and despite what you may have read otherwise, we have uh, increased our commitment to the Stabilization Center. Uh, it, is a, it is a jewel in our mental health uh, and our um, uh, mental wellness program here in the county, and uh, we're working to continue to exp expand its reach. Uh, any nursing homes in Dutchess with no COVID cases? That's a fine question. Do we have any nursing homes with zero? Uh, I believe we do, and if I can get that answer before we close up today, I will. Uh, but uh, we have seen uh, really good ma monitoring and management uh, by our, our nursing home facilities. We are sorry. I am personally sorry for those uh, who have experienced loss. I know what that feels like to, to lose a loved one uh, and not be able to be there with that person. Um, but I can tell you that the nursing home uh, administration and staff here in Dutchess County has worked regularly with the office, excuse me, the Department of Behavioral and Community Health. Andy, do you want to talk a little bit about do you, uh, some of the interaction with our uh, assisted living and nursing home facilities? Um, we, it's been really uh, one of the, uh, like, really solid responses we've had. And they've had a, they, they, they have weekly calls with them, and there's been mass testing. And if there is a positive or any incident at there, we are on it like really fast. Uh, that is being done by uh, another staff person, but it, again, it, it, I think it's been a, a real success actually. We, you know, we know the frustration that you have not being able to visit a family member. That's been challenging, and certainly, as I said, I, you know, I. I mean, I, I think people in office like me um, uh, need to express with great remorse the loss. I mean, there are a lot of a lot of lives lost, and we don't take that for granted or lightly at all. Uh, and I think as we move forward uh, in responding to this crisis, we need to be honest about some of the challenges that uh, uh, that we had, uh, nursing homes, and and sort of <clears throat> how the state uh, ultimately wanted to handle uh, individuals uh, who tested positive uh, with. Um, um, uh, with uh, 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 nursing home cases, so that is a that's a real challenge, right? It was a real challenge, and we saw too many lives lost because of uh, some decisions that were made, not by the administration of uh, the nursing homes, but frankly by the state. And I think we just be honest about it and and find ways to ensure um, uh, uh, to uh, to give meaning uh, to to that loss and to be sure that we're following up adequately. Uh, that, that said, as Andrew mentioned, uh, we, we had a great interaction with our, and still do, um, our um, uh, nursing home uh, administration and staff. And uh, frankly, uh, we've been very grateful for the response. And I'm very grateful for the team uh, who has been interacting with them. We were among the first in the state with Ulster and some others to do uh, initial testing uh, to be sure that we were identifying those with or without symptoms that may be carrying the disease. Uh, we'll continue to press for good policy and, and good response from the state. And we'll continue to coordinate uh, with those nursing homes. Uh, if I get an answer to that question, I'll be able to provide it to you. William asked, is the state going to provide or offer an early retirement incentive? That is not clear yet. Uh, the state has not come forward with, um, uh, sorry, uh, the state has not come forward uh, with an early retirement incentive proposal. The county does. We had 170 applicants. Uh, we are uh, going through that process of approving. The county legislature gave me the authority to move forward. They did that on, on Monday of this week. Uh, so we'll uh, be reviewing and are reviewing those applications for early retirement. Our goal is to approve as many as possible. Remember, our retirement expectation is uh, if we give you the incentive, we're trying to keep a position held for the 2021 year. That'll provide you real savings. Uh, so we estimate that our early retirement incentive could save Dutchess County uh, between uh, 10 and $12 million. Uh, so we'll uh, continue uh, to focus on that, provide assistance. Uh, Denise asked about updates on jail visits. This has been the challenge. This is actually one of the things that, I mean, when, when people want to talk about the county jail, uh, this is one of the challenges. It, it wasn't built for a problem like this, and the visitation structure isn't, isn't, isn't really, you know, the size of the space and what have you isn't there to meet the current protocols. So. Uh, the jail administration uh, 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 and the sheriff's office, uh, the jail functions administratively under the sheriff's office. They're, they've been working these last couple of weeks to try to meet uh, the safety precautions necessary to advance and have visitation. They have not yet gotten uh, state approval for that. They're hoping, uh, as I understand it, uh, they're hoping for the last week of August, so the week of the 20th, uh, to, be to be able to do that. I know it's been a long time, but keep in mind, in order to meet the current precautions, 
the this the current facility is is outdated. It's inadequate in, in a lot of ways, and this is just one more example of of why that jail. Uh, is just not a, a, a productive uh, facility, and so they're having a hard time meeting those, you know, uh, uh, distance, uh, distance, and and precautions because the space just is inadequate, and they're working to to meet those expectations. And we hope uh, to have visitation up and running the final week of this month. Um, so uh, I do want to mention uh, that uh, you may see um, folks uh, from uh, the United States Census out and about. I want to thank John Penny. Uh, in our complete count committee. We were very early, a year ago, worked to advance uh, um, uh, making sure that every every resident, every person of Dutchess, in Dutchess County is counted. Uh, so census work workers have been out and about. They might come to your door. Recognize that this isn't just some casual thing. This is actually a constitutional requirement. Every 10 years, we count every person in America uh, to be able to identify uh, and distribute federal dollars and to ensure that we get adequate representation in Congress and in our legislatures. So this, uh, this census count is critically important uh, for whatever reason, and I, I think it's wrong, the federal government has cut short uh, the count timetable. So we actually uh, are now, uh, instead of uh, the count completing at the end of October, the count is to complete by the end of September. I hope that the president and the federal government reverses that, although I can't uh, at this point say that they would. Um, it is it is a task of monumental proportions to engage in a uh, in a in a in a, count, in a census, and uh, we don't need less time. We need more, recognizing that. Um, you know, we're, we live in 2020. We have technology that will will make this a little bit easier. So why we need less time uh, is beyond me. Uh, why you would cut it short is beyond me. But they have. Uh, so we're asking you to please participate in the census. Um, you can find census information online. Uh, you can complete the census online. Uh, otherwise, uh, someone may, may come visit. Uh, they'll have an ID. So if somebody comes to your door and says they're with the census, you can ask for identification. They will have it. Um, and uh, if, uh, if they don't, uh, you should alert uh, the, uh, uh, the authorities. But uh, they, um, uh, census workers have ID. They'll be out helping to count. Uh, our current response rate is 62%, which is great. But we want 100% participation. We want to be sure that we get the right numbers in, uh, both for future federal aid, but also for representation in both Congress and in the state and local legislatures. Um, speaking of a constitutional uh, requirement, it's interesting. Uh, the Constitution actually identifies the naturalization of citizens ahead of even the printing of money. So um, on Friday uh, of this week at 11 a.m. in the county legislature, in those chambers next door, uh, we'll be hosting uh, the county clerk, Brad Kendall, will be hosting a naturalization ceremony. 17 new Americans uh, will take uh, their oath uh, here at the county office building. We'll be live streaming that so you'll be able to see it. Uh, visit duchessny.gov for that information. But naturalization ceremony is just a beautiful, beautiful uh, experience. These are individuals who work darn hard. Uh, to come to this country, to, to, to go through the process, and to be, uh, become American citizens, and quite frankly, in every way, uh, it is one of the most uh, beautiful expressions uh, of American um, uh, democracy, American independence, and this, this, this mosaic that we, we have here in this country. And uh, we'll be welcoming 17 new Americans here. Uh, Brad Kendall will swear them in, uh, and that is just a <clears throat> great experience and encourage you to uh, uh, to, to watch that. Uh, be able, I'll be there again, and, and I'm grateful uh, for that opportunity. Uh, let's quickly um, uh, go to the travel advisory. The governor's office this week uh, um, uh, made some changes to that travel advisory, added a few states, and took off a few. Uh, so Hawaii, South Dakota, and the Virgin Islands, which are not states, the Virgin Islands, but, you know, just saying. Um, Hawaii, South Dakota, and Virgin Islands were added. You have to cut your Hawaii trip. Um, Hawaii, you're not going to Hawaii. Hawaii, South Dakota, and Virgin Islands. You can tell it's been a long two weeks. Um, <clears throat> Hawaii, South Dakota, and Virgin Islands have been added. Alaska, New Mexico, Ohio, and Rhode Island were just removed. Uh, so remember, the state expects if you travel to one of those states or from one of those states back to New York, New Jersey, or Connecticut, you are to complete a travel advisory form. You can find that at the State of New York website. Uh, and uh, self-quarantine for 14 days. That is the expectation. And please, I would say to you, be especially sensitive uh, if you are sending kids to school. Just, just keep that in mind. Um, we just want to contain the transmission of the disease, and we don't want to endanger anyone else 
so I know that many of you, um, you know, have a, have, a, have an opinion about uh, about all of this. Well, we all have opinions about all of it, but about this travel advisory, please attempt to comply. Um, it can be enforced by the New York State Department of Health. Failure to comply does come with a fine, uh, but we are asking you, please, uh, if you if you do end up traveling these places, please quarantine for the 14 days, limit exposure so that uh, we don't end up transmitting the disease, and just be safe while you're out and about. And we we uh, uh, appreciate that very very much. If there are any other questions, please uh, add them to the feed, the comment section below uh, the live uh, feed. Uh, I do want to, um, <clears throat> again, uh, thank you all for uh, joining us. Andy, did I cover everything? Did you want to say anything else? Did you, was there anything else you thought we should cover? Well, I think the most important thing is, like, for all of us, is that contact, uh, keeping the level of the virus down, it takes all of us, including you that are listening in. So when you do get that call from the contact tracer, I would just really ask that you cooperate because you're helping us prevent someone from potentially dying from this disease. Um, thank you for, for uh, uh, sharing that. I, I will say that um, I have an answer on the nursing homes that I would like to be sure that we validate, but as of this moment, we are not showing positive cases in any of the 12 nursing homes. So um, uh, I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm happy to say that, but I'm skeptical. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it that at, at, at current, um, our, our, our spreadsheet does not show uh, a positive case. Uh, but uh, I do think uh, what we will do is if, if for some reason that's inaccurate, um, uh, just visit the comment section of, the, uh, of this feed and uh, we'll, we'll update it. But, but that said, I can tell you that, that it, it, we, we would be alarmed if there, were, if there were significant cases. So at the moment, um, the fact that we're saying there aren't any at nursing homes is um, I, it's a little surprising to me. Uh, but I'll, uh, I'll, I'll say that uh, both admirably uh, and with a degree of concern. But uh, that's uh, what we see on our spreadsheet at the moment. So we'll, we'll keep that in mind. Uh, and we'll certainly update you if uh, uh, that, well, we'll just update you <laughs> one way or another. Why don't we post online if we have some updated information? Uh, but as of this second, we're not showing any positive cases, which is uh, good for the health of those individuals uh, and certainly for uh, the community. If there are no other questions, we've been at this for 54 minutes. Um, I think we've covered just about everything uh, that I had. Any other questions, just write them in that comment section below the live feed. I see them uh, writing one down now, so we'll... Uh, do that, and then uh, I think we'll get to let you get on with your day. But I appreciate you, you joining us. We want one last question that I know they wanted to get asked, so it, I hope it's a good one. <laughs> They're all good questions. Uh, all good questions. Any indication when schools will fully open, Nikki? No, <laughs> there is no indication. Uh, and if you look at what's occurred, um, I mean, certainly at the moment, there is no expectation that we would have five days a week uh, full student uh, activities uh, currently. I mean, even at, at college, colleges are, are in a similar situation. And if you look at states that have less restrictions than, than, than New York has, even those states have restrictions as it relates to schools. Uh, I get it, believe me. I, I want my kids to get in-person uh, uh, education. I know that, that teachers want to be there for their, for their students and their classes. Uh, it's just a very difficult challenge for all of us. So we have to be considerate of the health of the student, the health of the staff, uh, the health of the community. We have to be considerate of the fact that we do need people and students to be taught in schools. And we need that ed education. We also have to be respectful of the fact that for the last few months, we've expected people to go to work in certain areas that never, never once thought that them going to work was going to put their health at risk. So I do think we have to be respectful of that and expect that we're all going to we're all going to sacrifice a little bit in order to. Uh, to make sure that we get the very best, but it's a, it's a very challenging moment uh, for schools in particular. We're going to continue to provide what assistance and guidance we can. I think our structure has worked well in communicating with schools. We'll have another meeting on Friday with school superintendents uh, to talk through contact tracing and testing and the policy um, ideas that Andy uh, mentioned. Uh, but, uh, you know, again, uh, we, we, get, we understand the challenge. Believe me, we do, and we see it and, and try to respond to it uh, every day. Uh, and I think with that, uh, what I will say is we're back on with you again next Wednesday. Uh, we'll uh, try to keep you updated. If there's any news that comes uh, about in the meantime, we'll, we'll please visit us at Dutchess County Government on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, you're already on Facebook if you're here. Uh, uh, or visit duchessny.gov, and uh, we'll be able to provide you what information we can. I, 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 I'm going to end just by thanking uh, the residents. Um, for your patience uh, and for your um, uh, willingness to, to, to be considerate and sacrifice. I know this has been a, a very challenging and remains a very challenging time financially for a lot of us. 
uh, fiscally uh, for a lot, um, the challenges on businesses and on residents, uh, and, and it is easy to be angry, and, and I get that. I really do. I understand how easy it is to sort of fall back into political arguments. I understand that. Uh, just let's let's uh, keep ourselves uh, focused on doing what's best for each other, uh, trying to be respectful of various opinions that we might have, uh, and to be considerate of each other's concer uh, concern for health and for concern for getting back to living. And uh, all of that is a real uh, challenge, but it's also an opportunity for us to, uh, to be the very best we can be. So uh, with that, uh, stay well, uh, be safe, and uh, continue to be kind to each other.